kids. We're going to have Matthew join us today. <laughs> Here's my son. He's walking by. He's staying out of the camera's view, but he's in my art studio. Welcome back to the Yard of F.A. Checky. Very exciting episode because we got the monster canvas today. Matthew's going to be doing some art with me. He's crazy. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. But I got this ginormous canvas this is actually a let me see here 36 inches by 48 inches my biggest canvas yet omg this is gonna blow your socks off <laughs> and i got matthew's pokemon hat on that really pissed him off <laughs> you're acting like steven share no yeah. i don't act like steven share goes oh yeah oh yeah it's so big <laughs> he always says that. Sorry, Steam Share, if you ever see this video, which I really doubt it because we're like the UHF channel of YouTube with like two views, man. <laughs> we're going to get there though, right, Matthew? We're going to get the views. You know why we're going to get the views? Because you're crazy on Facebook and your friends are freaking Tony Stark. Well, my friends on Facebook do appreciate some of this. I don't know if they appreciate all of it, but uh, I think there is... I think there's going to be um, a big uh, following for the show eventually. You have to get a lot of shows out there. Uh, you have to have something interesting to watch. I thought this would be a lot more interesting because this last piece here, and uh, Matthew's sitting here in my office. Uh, he's he's going to be drawing stuff. This piece here we've been working on for like three months, and Matthew can tell you he's been kind of sick of it, right? Sick of what? <laughs> Watching me do this painting. He's like, when are you ever going to be done, Dad? For a second, the rope looked like his hand was just a huge claw like the rake man. Oh, yeah. Well, <clears throat> this piece is done for the most part. Uh, it's in the drying setting phase. Most of the paint's dry. So we're going to do a big elephant piece on this, like I said, on this huge canvas. I'm just right now getting it all set up. It's going to be done with acrylic paint, um, just kind of a more uh, modern art look to it. But my wife loves elephant so much and my son loves animals i don't think elephants his favorite but he uh, he does love what do you love matthew dogs. he likes dogs and wolves and anything canine uh we do have two dogs and a cat huskies yeah he loves huskies oh my god he loves i'm gonna get a golden mm -hmm. retriever husky mix when i grow up but daddy yeah. and mom say no Mm -hmm. Another thing we've been working on recently was um, the last episode. If you saw it, this was from my son Matthew. Was Sonic the Hedgehog here? Yeah. What do you think, Matthew? It's good. You like it? He did the old Sonic. Yeah. So this isn't like um, every line. All the the lines on it still need to be kind of, um, I guess, straightened out or cleaned up. But this is this is it pretty much. Uh, the composition's done. I like to let it dry, then do the final details. Because the oils um, on acrylics are still wet. Uh, take days and days to dry, of course. Here I am trying to find a place to stand this thing up. Put it right there. Okay, so we've been talking for like three minutes, which is long enough for all you guys. Again, we're going to set this up. going to light the Bob Ross candle. Got to light the Bob Ross candle. That's essential, right, Matthew? Oh, okay. I'll show you here in a second. Um... So we're, this is huge. I'm gonna get it somehow set up here where we can paint and do our thing. Yeah, because this is so big, I don't even think it, I can fit it on here because of the way it's positioned in the corner. I have my easel position here in the corner to provide a, a lot of stability with weights on it and everything. It don't move, it don't move, no. Well, look at a hair out of place, Matthew. Look, at you messed, I had it all nicely combed for this episode and you messed it up. Yeah, because you put it on <laughs> Yeah, I had your I had your his Pokemon hat on. Anyway, um, all acrylics gonna be black and white, a little bit of grays, a little bit of light brown tones in it. Um, so nothing all that uh, uh, elaborate in terms of colors. Basically, you only need black, white, and a little bit of brownish color. Uh, which you, if you don't have brown acrylics, just mix uh, blue and um, orange. That gets you a brown, or you know, green and orange gets you another type of brown. Uh, gray or brown and uh, so there's gonna be we're gonna we're gonna uh, outline the elephant with the black and uh, just it's gonna be very texturized um, these these uh, mo more monotone but an elephant in the end hopefully it looks good so I'm gonna get this set up and we're gonna paint
All right, Matthew's over here just drawing his Sonic because he liked the Sonic that I did for him was for his room. He's been wanting a painting for his room, so he's now uh, recreating that, which is awesome. But now, <clears throat> also, uh, kind of light. Okay. As you can see, it wouldn't be the same without Bob Ross candle. Get that thing going there, so nice. Ooh, isn't that nice? Unlimited power. Unlimited power, folks. Got this canvas kind of set up like this. I mean, I, I better not get anything on the walls. We aren't gonna be splatting anything. Gonna get the palette up and running. And we are going to start. Maybe get a little ASMR in there too with the paint. Woohoo! Okay, so we're gonna start with a little filbert brush here. I got my paints here, my white and my black. Just putting some on my really dirty canvas here. I don't care. I gotta clean this mixing pad here. Start woo. Start applying some here to the canvas, but I got this dirty palette. I'm gonna, like I said, I gotta clean it up. Yeah, that didn't sound great, but I why not show you some stuff? Just get a, 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 these big old tubes of acrylic. Put a bunch of black and white on there. And I think what I'm gonna do in order to make my brown tone grays, I like this burnt Sierra quite a bit. And uh, this little tube here, make sure that's um, acrylic, which it is. Because I have these little tubes of oils gotta be careful with. They get mixed in sometimes in my treasure chest of stuff. And what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm just gonna go over in here and just just simply apply around here uh, the, some black to outline. Uh, lots of black. We've got some water in here to kind of uh, just thin it down some. And uh, start just working the edges. Be careful not to get my wall. A little filbert brush, like I said. I can get a bigger brush too at some point. Not necessarily right, what I need right now. I'm just scrubbing in some color. Dad. Yeah, bud. Cool. I like it. What does he say? What the... What the heck are you? No, what the hell are you? Yeah, that's not appropriate language. We know that. Hell. You write stuff? I know. I wrote a book about hell. You want to show everybody the book? is right there. <laughs> yeah, you probably all think I'm nuts for doing this, but... This is my book. I wrote a children's book I did a long time ago, uh, Netherworld Dreams, which is a kid's book, but it's uh, about young Dante from Dante's Inferno. And I guess I am a hypocrite to say that that uh, <laughs> that using the word hell is um, inappropriate for kids. And, and I don't necessarily think it is. I think it's contextual. Um, some people get real offended by it. Uh, if, if it's used as like a pejorative of some kind. I got some on the wall already. My wife will not like that. Whoopsies. All right, we'll just clean that off here. Gonna, it's good to have a wet rag anyways around when you're painting. Um, we'll get the rest of that off later. No big deal. So come, that's how acrylics are nice. They come right off. Um, it's gonna kind of go up around the edge and because I'm being sloppy. Um, you know what, this filbert's giving me way too much texture, um, perhaps, but we'll see. It may actually work uh, with the black because we want some texture like this. And so I'm making these long lines. Eventually we'll get the elephant's ears in and things that are the shape of the elephant. Uh, but for right now, what we really need is just to kind of block out. It's a big elephant picture, mostly the front angle. That's what my, my wife really wanted. What's up, Matthew? So we're just, like I said, we're just kind of texturizing the canvas with this black. And don't worry too much about general um, shape yet. Uh, we ha uh, uh, haven't gotten there. So we'll just start working the edges like we are. And I'm just going to go in a round fashion. There'll be a big old head of an elephant here. What's this for? 
Huh? That one? I don't know. It was going to be a special project because Mommy wanted to do an even bigger one. <laughs> so I had to get the biggest one I can fit in our wall that'll, that'll work. So I'm going to keep doing this, and we're going to come back, and I'll show you some progress. Ha, okay. <laughs> Just checking the camera. All right, so we can see here, um, putting in the basic shape of the elephant, just to lay it out. It's just, you know, a little bit of water on the brush too to thin out my paint. Nothing um, too specific, very abstract. Uh, got the trunk down here where it should lay uh, the center, okay? And um, as we blend around it, using the acrylics, it's gonna be quite a bit of acrylic application. Um, that uh, that will um, eventually look way different. This is this is in the very sketchy, uh, sketchy alley. That sketchy dude down the alley. Watch him. No, this is just sketched out. I'm just like I said. I'm just laying in some basic color and and filling in where I think um, a lot of my shadow needs to be. Okay, uh, keeping it dark in certain parts, lighting it up in others. Um, having a ton of fun just I love to use big brushes this is way more uh, this is fun painting I think uh, I enjoy this a lot the last work I did is tedious work it's enjoyable it's rewarding uh, it's like working out you know it's like going to the gym for an artist whereas this is like not just just like working out for fun for an artist um, that sounds like what the hell are you talking about <laughs> No, he's not. I think Matthew's just kind of playing his game, listening over there. Um, right, Matthew? Yeah. Got the basic trunk um, formation here. Uh, we want to keep our lines formed according to the uh, uh, scheme of the painting. Um, basically, where the head will be. Uh, the eyes are kind of deep in here. Can't really see them so much. But um, this is just like sketching with a paintbrush, and you have to just know your shape and proportions and how this is a huge old elephant. Um, I think my wife will be happy with it. Um, for those of you out there, are some out there I know on Facebook looking for art commissions. This is not going to be a big, long project. This is more of the abstract type um, paintings that if I were to dedicate a whole day to this, I probably could be done. Um, Naturally, I don't have that much time, but um, there are some commissions that have been requested of me, but this commission for my wife, which obviously she's not paying me cash for it, but I live with her and I love her. She comes first, right, Matthew? Mommy comes first before paid customers. If anyone's watching this, just be advised that I will get to your commissions. Um, and we will get get to you in order because i'm only one artist if you want art done by me in particular you gotta just um wait in line i know there was one that needed one by the end of may i was thinking and i should have that done still no problem and it fits in perfectly i have a commission coming up for fantasy type like castles dragons fairies and all that uh, I believe it's a fantasy magazine. I hope they're still interested in me. Uh, maybe they've moved on since because I haven't got done, but they said they needed it in May. And here, we're, here we are, May 5th. May 5th, 2019. Yay. So again, just, just, just etching in where this all has to lay out. I'll probably be, as the other acrylics come into play, um, fixing it up differently um, in terms of the shape. I just need to get in a general shape. A lot of, I got a bigger brush here too. Oh boy, this is, I love doing this. Oh boy. Just this big old brush. Man, love it. Feels great. It's like so satisfying to just do a, a painting like this just because it feels so nice. Um, to, to this the touch, uh, you see something come to life very fast. You don't get to use big brushes like this on a, a detailed work. And I'm still doing fine. I mean, it's up for prints. The uh, last piece with the seaport and the ships, uh, we finally uh, titled it uh, The Arrival Home After a Perilous Journey. Uh, 
I'll still do some fine detail work as it dries, but it's good, good enough to start doing prints of it. Uh, the finished products over time, um, just like Traverse and Golden Seas, one of the big ship paintings, takes a lot of time to get it to where I feel I'm satisfied and I come back to them and I, and I toy with little things here and there and fix little things here and there. But right now I'm just gonna let that thing dry and not worry about it so much so I can work on some other things. Um, and speaking of other things, and I was a little bit of the diarrhea of the mouth there, right? Matthew's like, what? Diarrhea of the mouth? Dad, what are you saying? Um, what I, I was going on about how the, 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 there's a commission asked of me for a fan, fantasy magazine. Fan, fantasy. So there's a commission for the fantasy magazine um, cover, a cover for that, which I'm really excited to do. Uh, that's my uh, year three art of F.A. Checky, another series, a third uh, This will be actually a second series. It wasn't really a series for year one. It was just more of a coming back to my art type of um, series, nothing specific. But year three is very specific in terms of fantasy and surrealism or surreal fantasy. Uh, I'll be posting things on my website and my page on Facebook that kind of relate to the fantasy and the, and the um, surreal stuff that I'll be working on. And uh, a couple commissions though in between, I have to get this elephant done before I move on. And I have to get a dog picture done for another Facebook friend who's asked me to paint her, her lovely little Dotson, who's I guess getting older and she loves that dog and wants to memorialize it with a painting. So we'll have to get a couple commissions done in May and then hopefully towards the end of May, uh, really start working into these um, series related paintings. Uh, but, but I can always overlap a little bit. This is still overlapping somewhat with my last piece. Like I said, I'm still doing fine details, but I gotta just let that dang thing sit before I mess something up. I wanna let everything dry on that. Cause once the oil's dry, you can always wipe it off if you make a mistake with oils on a dry oil. Be like, oh, I don't like that. Take a rag, wipe it off. The underlying oils dry, a lot easier to do. All right, never mind that right now. Just checking where I'm at video wise. I am not the best videographer, but I'm trying to be. A lot better. Matthew probably knows more about making YouTube videos, I think, than me, and he's a nine. Uh, Matthew watches quite a bit of YouTube. Matthew, who's your favorite YouTuber? Um, Preston Plays or um, Unspeakable. Okay, what do they do? Minecraft. Ah, he's, see, Matthew's playing Minecraft right now. He's very much into <laughs> Minecraft. Um, and, uh, oh, that big bro, I love it. Just, Feeling that on the canvas, these big brushes just feels like butter. Matthew's like, oh my god, my dad's acting like an idiot. You're thinking it. It's all right. When you're on YouTube, you just act yourself. And then one day, maybe even long, long, long from now, these things will still be on there. I could be dead or something. Be like, that was my dad. I get to watch him. That's another good reason to make YouTube videos. I mean, even if it's not like for commercial reasons, just to keep a, like your, your home videos somewhere for your kids and future generations and your family to see, be like, that was freaking dad, grandpa, blah, 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 great grandpa. He had a show and it was so cool. He did artwork and all that. Um, my, my stepson, Austin, he's 17. He's, he's got his channel, he does um, makeup stuff. He does more on Snapchat. So we're kind of like a multi-talented family. Matthew is very good at, in, in problem solving. And mine, he's like so good in Minecraft. He's, Minecraft to him is like second nature. Math to him is in second nature. And I actually think Minecraft, don't you agree Matthew? You can actually learn a lot in Minecraft, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's design, it's engineering. Well, some people say, yeah, sure, anything could be addictive. Potato chips are addictive. Internet could be addictive. Uh, Minecraft's probably one of the better ones I would prefer for my kids um, to play Minecraft just because there's so much you can learn, so much education there. Um, and uh, I, I actually do have to hand it to some of those YouTubers that, that jumped in on that and, and started doing 
um, videos about Minecraft because I'm like, wow, you, you really found the right market when you got into it. Now, here I am doing painting. I'm like, oh, man, that's so boring. It's so high culture. What is this guy doing? More people need to do art, okay? Minecraft is art, too, in a sense. You're creating something. I'm just doing it here on the canvas, and it's so satisfying. Not always ASMR. I mean, it can be ASMR. I feel like it's ASMR for my brain when I do art. And, and, and I didn't really talk about this much. You can make an ASMR sensation for someone else watching the work being done, but I feel like for my brain, need some more white paint. Uh, for my brain, when I do painting, um, I'm satisfying myself to some extent. I love creating, if you're a creative type, you almost live for that type of thing live for my family first and foremost, but when it comes to hobbies, I want that to be a light source up here, so I'm gonna make this really light. When it comes to hobbies and things like that, um, what is your X factor? What is your X factor? Like, what do you like to do when you come home from work? When you're not cooking dinner, cleaning the house, watching the kids? You gotta have something. Some people just read. Great, awesome. That's an awesome, just engage with your mind on a book, you know, in a book, in all which ways you, you escape the world around you. And I'm not saying to escape reality, but sometimes you need a little escape, whatever it is. Um, by all means, don't just live like this, this misery of every day being the same. Contribute something to the world. You know, why do we do art? Well, we might do it to make money. Some people have a job at this. You know, it's not just um, people like me who are more into the art itself and showing it um, and just love, I just love doing art. In the end, if I make money doing art, awesome. Cool. How, who, who else doesn't want to make money doing their hobby? Um, but I, I love doing it and I'll do it no matter what. If I make nothing on it, I don't care. I just love doing it. There's something about that joy of painting aspect, there really is, that just makes it satisfying in and of itself just to do art. I used to draw when I was a kid just for the heck of it. That's sort of the child in us, I think. I, I think that child in us never dies. We, we can suppress it. I think the world, the corporate world, the, the work world, the drudgeries of life, definitely the drudgery of life, um, steers us away from what's enjoyable. When we're living like simple hunter-gatherers or agriculturally very simple in the early civilization, you know, we had to learn, we had to work long days to feed our families. We certainly had to do that, um, no doubt, but uh, in the end, Pull out that little flute, pull out their music, they lit a fire, perhaps. I'm like, you're like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, they make the campfire, pull out their musical instruments or sing. Cavemen, what do they do in their caves? We have some of these paintings that are 20 to 40,000 years old. They don't know for sure how old some of them are. 20, 30,000 years. 30,000 years ago, people like us that were just living like off the land with no civilization, the hunter gather, early hunter gather people, they lived in these enormous um, caves. Uh, like in France, they have some with the cave paintings. And these things are ancient. Uh, the public can hardly view them anymore. Uh, you have to get in there with the French uh, government or if they do a special tour for some folks to see these. And it's funny that it's in France. It's so much art in France. I think there might be some in Italy too. Um, but it's like in our culture, you know? And I, I know everybody wants to just watch YouTube videos about video games or people making slime or kids playing with toys or opening, you know, new toys. But if you're a kid or adult, this type of entertainment, this type of viewing on YouTube is cultural. It's, it, it, it makes you a better person to do art or to be creative. 
And I know I'm biased, I'll admit. I'm one of the first people to admit of my own bias. But if you're gonna watch something online, learn something sometimes. Does it always have to be mindless crap? Sorry, Matthew, you gotta tell, gotta tell you, some of those mindless crap. It is. So if you're like a parent, um, or an educator, or a, a, a caretaker of children, um, well, have them watch a show like this every once in a while. It doesn't have to even need to be my show. I mean, I'd like you to watch my show, but a kid would be like, oh, I want to learn to paint an elephant. Elephant. I saw an elephant painting an elephant on a video, and it's real. Now, exploitative. I do not agree with how that elephant, I think, is being treated in terms of its life. A lot of these elephants are so mistreated. I want to talk about that a little bit, too before I pause the video, before we go into the next step. But some of these elephants are horribly mistreated and just to get serious for a minute, my wife is very passionate about this subject and she's writing a book. Eventually that's gonna be much more about the elephants. She's planning some trips to South Africa and Asia. I'm going. And she, yeah, Matthew's going with her. I'm going um, to, where is it, Korea with her? Uh, yeah, one of the ele oh, Thailand, one of the elephant preserves out there. She went to the Texas Elephant Preserve recently. So my wife Daphne, she she's very passionate about this subject. That's why the elephants being done, but they're one of the coolest creatures ever. Um, and I say creature, but I, I say wrongly. I say wrongly when I say creature. They're beings like dolphins. They're beings like us. Super intelligent. Super empathic. Super emotional. Um, like us, uh, when I say emotional, they bury their dead, they mourn their dead, they care for the young, they care for others that, that aren't even their children, and they, and they look after the pack, the uh, mothers especially. Those moms are just extraordinary, um, the elephant moms. And um, anyways, we're a creative family, and my wife's writing about this stuff especially about women, and it's going to tie into the elephant subject, because these elephant women, females, beings, not creatures. I, I, I could never see an elephant as a creature anymore after the studies shown and the things my wife showed me. They're, they're land dolphins in a way. They have their own language even, in a sense. And this stuff isn't made up. They communicate in extraordinarily sophisticated ways. And the fact that an elephant was painting an elephant, think about that for just a second. I'm gonna stop here for a minute, just give you a look here at the canvas, see where we're at. Uh, but you can kind of get a general idea of this outline of this elephant, which um, I do need to fix up. The other, um, this is very off in terms of how I think this is all gonna look. I gotta make a lot of corrections. And I think also here, um, the angle of the camera is not great. I'm gonna have to fix up how the ears are. Uh, like I said, it's very abstract. As we start laying in more paint, we can fix more, make it kind of come together more um, in terms of shape and form. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely off where those legs are. Um, but again, this is there's a lot to this uh, process. Um, but that gives you a general idea just laying out in black and white. We come in with some other coloration here and there. Um, as we go from the, the, the darker side, the shades over there to the lighter side where there's a light source of some kind, uh, we'll be tying in some of these browns and just make it look real good. I, I hope my wife will be happy with it. Well, it's been a day since we started the elephant piece in this episode. Um, of F.A. Checky, uh, the, well, this episode, <laughs> it's, it's F.A. TV, the art of F.A. Checky. This coffee's definitely not working. Try that again. Okay, so this is, uh, moving on to episode, um, uh, past the, uh, the ship scene that we did, once again, and, uh, we're, Continuing on with this elephant piece, and uh, I just wanted to take a little uh, break in between and remind y'all to like, subscribe, uh, to uh, you know, 
tell people about the channel, uh, about the shows. This is a very special episode regarding elephants. And like I said, if we can generate ad revenue from the YouTube channel, and my wife will absolutely and, and totally, totally support and love this. Um, this episode in particular, if we can generate ad revenue on, on this one, I would donate uh, 50% of any ad revenue to a cause to protect the elephants. Um, I wanted to say this before we done, we're done today, and uh, before I go on to some more painting, the elephants are uh, hunted and uh, poached. Uh, there's there's uh, laws in place against that, but there, there's hunters that go out and kill them, even on the preserves, which is illegal. Africa being um, the continent where we see a lot, there's also the Asian elephants, a lot of many near India. Thailand, the, very, the various uh, uh, Asian elephants as well that are in danger for different reasons, uh, but the African ones, of course, for the ivory trade. Uh, my wife particularly wanted this male elephant done with the, with the tusks, and uh, the, those tusks are what the poachers go after. Uh, you can see in the picture this is a tusked elephant, and it makes me think um, just how precious these beings are. Uh, how smart they are. Please help us protect them. Get the word out about this episode. If you love elephants, if you're into wildlife and protecting them, like I said, if we can get this video to go viral, think about how much money we can raise for the elephants. I'm going to stop there. Again, like, subscribe, and thank you. And uh, I'm going to go on to paint some more, and you get to see a little bit here as to where I was um, uh, last time we were working on this. Um, but I'll just give you a little view right there. Have a little more coffee. Maybe my brain will start working again. Okay, so kind of add some more details. We're gonna add in tiny hints of green, a little bit of browns, grays, and just finish this baby up. Cause my wife's actually pretty pleased with it the way it is, but we don't want to overpaint it. <laughs> and I want to finish it. I still want it done as the artist wants and, and sees the vision. Um, even though she's like, stop, you don't have to do any more. And I'm like, oh, just let me finish. Let me finish, please. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I'm going to start painting some more. All right, we're in the final stretch of this whole deal. And I'm just using two brushes, some water, some acrylics, Mars Black. We've got some acrylic, titanium white. Uh, just a little bit of sap green, a little bit of uh, raw sienna. Okay. And those are just to make some browns with a little bit of red, a little bit of Indian yellow to vary the browns. That's all we're using. Just two simple brushes, some one much bigger than the other, okay? Um, got the water on these, just gonna shake them off a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead with this bigger brush here just to cover some more here. Um, I kinda wanna get this part here um, a little more covered with the paint. Um, same as up here, I got a little bit of green on the brush too just to kinda put in some uh, lines. This is more abstract. This is not, uh, as we've seen with my other works, the detailed type of work or fantasy based, uh, like the last piece of a little bit kind of fantasy storybookish. Um, that was the look I wanted. So each painting I do, I want to look, okay? A look to it. This is the look my wife wanted, okay? She said, do it out like abstract. And I'm like, okay, all right. Um, certain whatever you want, babe. Uh, so that's how this is going to look. Um, and I don't have to constantly clean these brushes, which is awesome because it's like we're using big lines. They don't have to be even as much. It's perfect. But we do want some certain coloration to take place here. Certainly um, some color considerations and lines and shape and form. So if you're paying attention to line, shape, and form, the shape of the elephant, we're pretty important, right? Um, and that's where we can kind of go in with some black and fix some things that maybe we didn't like as much. I didn't like all this much um, light back there, but I wanted some. Again, we're just gonna put in some more lines here. Some more lines here on the tusks and shadow lines. We can even do that with this brush here. Uh, these, uh, and you know how the tusks have little uh, wrinkles or whatever you want to call them. Put some of those back in there. We'll go back in some white. Same as up here. And up here where we kind of went over some of it. We lost some of those process. 
So th th this is where we're just kind of having fun, you know. Uh, loose detail, I guess, is tenuous detail uh, because it's it's not meant to look realistic uh, like a picture. And that's the beauty of abstract art. It's something in the mind, how I vision an elephant in my head, or how I envision an elephant in, in my dreams, my, my sleeping dreams or my daydreams. Beautiful, beautiful beings that they are. And like I said, I don't want to call them creatures anymore because I, I honestly think they're so much more than that. Um, with their intelligence and their emotions and their absolute beauty. Um, we are an animal loving house. We have fish here. We have um, dogs, two dogs, a cat. We had, unfortunately, the rats did not live. My, uh, my, my stepson, Austin, he's 17, told us he, they were getting sick. And I think they, the mites got them with the food and well. Um, I, I don't know, we weren't a big fan of trying that out, but unfortunately they didn't make it. We had to put a, a rat down recently at the vet because he was just suffering uh, with the uh, mites that were chewing into his wounds. Nah, that's really sad, uh, but we love animals, uh, especially, uh, obviously, the ones we have, but even ones we don't want to have, but we want to protect. And just checking the time. Okay. This is going to be a little bit longer episode, but it's okay. You can hear me blab on, blab on, blab. Blab, blab, blab. <laughs> Quit blabbing and paint. What is she just thing doing? You actually get to see something done in an episode. Oh, my God. All right. Had a lot of fun recently. Uh, having a, a, I'm fortunate enough to have this opportunity now some time to work on my art, work on my show, which I'm not going to be able to do as much here. Um, come going get back to work, I won't be able to, but I got this time now. And it was so precious to me to finish a major project, to finish this, um, to, to get to experience what I needed to with my art, because I feel my art's experience itself. And I said, what do you mean by experience? You might say, like, well, um, it's, it's about your, your gaining experience, really. Um, it's, a, it's a huge part of my life next to my family. I do a lot of this for my family. It's my, part of my legacy, you know? When I die one day, I'll have YouTube videos, all this stuff on social media, which is fine, I guess. That'll be part of my legacy. Is you'll see these videos, maybe when, even when I'm an old man, you'll be like, "Oh, that was young Fa. That was him." Uh, some artists don't get to live so long. I hope I get to live a very long life. Some people don't get to live so long. Not just artists, but people in general. But what is the legacy you want to leave behind? I'm gonna have a drink of coffee here. You can just look at this piece here while I talk. What is the legacy you want to leave behind? I think it's always a good question to ask. Um, and you young people don't care, you're immortal. In, I am, in, and you're not, but in your minds you are. Um, I, w I felt that way too. And if I get some young people to watch this show, I think this will really appeal to young people. Uh, especially young people that love animals. Okay? If you are a young person that loves animals, um, please, please tell your friends about this show. Um, this is probably one of those shows where I feel most emotional and passionate about. Um, like, last one, I, I love ships. I mean, I have passion for that. But, sh you know, and I love those scenes that I do, um, which feel like so much part of my, my fantasies in my head, the places I'd love to go in my mind. But this, this is a, a real thing in my, my, my planet. This earth that we live in that's so precious because we only have this. We don't know how we're ever gonna get to any other planets. We can talk about space exploration. 
we're supposed to take care of what's here. No doubts in my mind that we have to take care of all of God's creatures and ourselves. But I don't think God wants us or any higher power, whatever you believe, wants us to disparage his creations. It's a sin in my mind whenever we Justice to anything that, that is here that I know that sometimes we gotta eat. <laughs> we don't have to eat elephants. We don't have to eat rhinoceros. We don't need ivory tusks. Humans have this notion that everything's here for us to just do what we want with. And that's partly true in terms of we have dominion, but I don't think it's true as far as taking care of the world and taking care of the creatures that coexist with us that are part of this ecosystem that are part of this very precious planet and, and elephants they're not the only precious thing but they are definitely precious to, to me and my wife and my kids my wife will be going to South Africa here uh, maybe even next year to study the elephants for part of her writing and maybe I'll get to go along with her or Unless she has to go because um, it's expensive a and b we have kids and i don't know where i want them all going i don't know if she wants them all going either it's a very special exploration for her and, um, and it's a very special exploration um, for her writing okay. what that basically means is sometimes you have to let people take their adventures in life because of their creations just like my wife I probably convinced her you gotta let me go to Europe and she'll be like not without me fool <laughs> she got to go to England without me but I've been to I've traveled traveled to Africa even I've been to Tanzania I've been to Russia I've been to Hungary Germany Austria and then just Mexico but that's another country too, and it's a beautiful country in some parts. Um, just like the other parts I've been to, Tanzania had a beautiful ocean. Oh my god. I wish I got to see the elephants when I was there, but I was donating some of my time and my abilities to help people in the um, urban ghetto outside Dar es Salaam. But we didn't have time nor money. Because it's expensive to go on a safari, but we wanted to if we could have then we found out how much and we're like um yeah and when they would have taken us on a bus to kenya and we would have saw some wildlife there but sometimes you just can't do it especially when you're making a dedication to other things there put some little highlight on that side just kind of work it so that the trunk's a little bit thicker. Now, that, that, you want to stay with the lines, too, here, the line pattern. Um, probably where I need to go in with this other brush. Clean, got a little black on there, just kind of clean up the edge. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It does not have to be perfect. But it does have to look my mind, my soul, I feel like those are very much connected in painting because I'm in this painting somehow. But the spirit of this elephant, wherever this giant male elephant lives, is very much in this painting. Telling us, looking at me, and I'm, t and I'm telling you, protect our species us. We're part of the heart of the world. We aren't the only ones that have hearts. We have families too. Just like you. We love them. Please protect us and appreciate us and respect us. 
that's what I think the elf is saying to me. And this is going to be a piece that sits in our home. It's for my wife. There'll be a, a, another piece I'm going to do after this one, so we'll do two episodes. We're going to make a complimentary piece to this. Right? <laughs> no pirate laugh today. <laughs> Like that one pirate, I have a pirate thing on there uh, uh, somewhere, I, I can't remember. I think it's on TikTok or something, and on one of my episodes where I just pulled it off there. That's my real laugh. Don't laugh at me. Laugh with me, please. I don't care, you can laugh at me. There's a laugh at that. Cool. Um, but what I'm trying to say is... Next episode will be a complimentary elephant. She wants two on big can. I'm gonna go to I need to go to the art store today. Yay! I'm gonna have to buy another big canvas. My wife is like, no, 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 we need two. I'm like, I'm gonna two. Okay, then I'm gonna do two episodes. You get two of these elephant episodes. Hip, hip, hooray! And I'm learning the art of YouTubing. Oh my god! I hope you're all gonna love this episode and the next I'm almost done <clears throat> oops little see where I put a little too much there that's right we'll fix that this is the beauty of the acrylics I'm really wanting to get this um, look right there but we're almost done and just need to kind of go in and fix those up a little bit. I don't want too much glare, like shine, uh, but soft. We're gonna fix those up and hopefully be, there's gonna be a little shine there. Gonna get a little, you see where the light source is to the right, up there, okay? Gotta get some more whites in here. Because that's part of our color scheme as well. Using these whites. A little bit more in there. A little bit more up here. Brighten that up with a little green, maybe right in here. And I'm going to call it done on this video. Uh, we don't want to go on like Lord of the Rings. And you're gonna be like, this is getting boring, stop. I'm gonna put that in there we go. Just a little bit of green right here. Wherever that light source is hitting it. Put a little bit of that color up in here. I don't wanna bring it all together. Put a little bit more greens in here. Spirit came in. Why are you, Bob? I know you're here. And I think this is also, as Picasso called it, Enwende. I'm not an abstract artist, but the Enwende just kind of filled me with what I needed to do this piece. Never done anything like this before in my whole life. Looked at some elephants. I've studied elephants, lots of pictures. Art, another art piece, my wife showed me how the style she wanted. Okay, okay. I get from that abstract art how you want this to look. At least in approximate detail and shape. Because she had something very specific in mind as far as the artwork. And that's great because sometimes you just have a specific look you want. A motif, uh, a style that you feel is calling you for your for her 
it's not just about her home having an elephant picture that the uh, interior designer worthy. Um, it's also about this passion. Again, I'm going to end off here uh, talking about this passion that she has for these animals. And we're animals too, by the way, but I'll call them beings, animals like us. In the biological sense, they're not reptiles. But they're beautiful beings, an animal like us. We are an animal that shares something with them, empathically, um, spiritually, I think. And I think the people that live around them, <clears throat> even some people worship Ganesh, which is an elephant looking god. There's an elephant god that is looking. in Hindu, Hinduism. Just going to kind of work out the rest of the details. Um, the little green down there, I think that touch down there really helps. Yeah, there you go. You feel that? You feel that hitting you? The Andwende hitting you? When I say Enduende, it's like this art spirit. And that's so cool. I loved how Picasso said, I don't know exactly what I was doing all the time. Picasso was like, but Enduende came to me. And you can say, I learned to paint in art school. I learned to paint on my own. I watched videos. But when Enduende hits, it's like, boom. And what I mean by that is the spirit that just comes into you and flows and, and, and comes from your mind, your heart, and in through the medium and the paintbrush or whatever medium you're working with. And it just feels like magic almost. It doesn't always hit. Same with writing. Some people might call it your muse. Okay. Um, I call it. Kind of like my art spirit, you know, or a duende. Stopped painting when I was about 15. I built toy models of ships at about 15. Built toy models of ships. And then people even paid me to build them because they're really elaborate, big ship models. I made a couple hundred bucks doing that. But this, I gave up. When I was 15 years old, gave it up. It's on my bio, my, my uh, blog, fhecheckyoriginalart.com. I talk about it, and it was such a disappointment to me um, later in life, I guess, that I gave it up. Um, because I got into school and college and girls and social life, and drinking and all that stuff. That, I hope you kids don't fall into because you give up things for that. I could have stayed focused on this. Imagine where I'd be if I just kept painting since I was 15 and didn't party and didn't, you know, do all those things that young people do and think it's so fun and cool. But maybe that was something I had to do as part of the process. Maybe I wouldn't be the artist I am if I didn't go through that process. Because I was meant to. I made a decision to. And I don't know where I'd be. Maybe I'd be in a place where I don't have this experience in my art or something. But I feel this connection to art all my life and creation, and I missed it. I missed it so much. So much. But here I am doing it again. Here I am doing it again less preconceived notions about it perhaps just doing what I enjoy not what I think other people think I should do but just what I enjoy and what I feel <clears throat> what I want to feel and yeah I'll sell some art not why I do this it's 
not why I do this YouTube channel either. I would, I would love it for, like I said, I would love for my YouTube channel to make some money. But not so much for me. But to give back for others, for artists, like I said, other episodes are for artists to raise money for them. But this episode and the next, these next two, uh, this episode, the next in particular, in particular, will be about the elephants and wildlife, raising money for them and awareness. Lots of awareness about these causes that we need to still focus on, even though we have so many things to save humans right now. We'll give to humans too. But we can't forget our other kin in the world that are not human, per se. But maybe just as much human as we are in our, in our heart and our mind, they just don't live like us. They don't, they don't care to live like us at all. Well, they can't. They don't have the ability to make the tools and perhaps the technology. I'm going to step back and take a look and see where we are. I'm running out of uh, space here on the camera uh, to record too much longer because I got a lot of stuff. I got to wipe some stuff out. I love it how it is. Um, I might go over it with um, a veneer. Like, a, I'll go to Michael's today. I gotta get another canvas this big, but I'm gonna shine over it. And uh, when I say shine over it, I mean uh, like a gloss of some kind. Maybe I'll get a spray. I don't know. Maybe I'll get a spray. I'm, I'm not sure what we'll do. Just notice here a little bit. I wanna fix on that tusk. I need to shadow that in anyways. Um, yeah, I think we need, I think, I do, I do definitely think we need to shine this up somehow. And when I say shine it, a gloss of some kind. Uh, because I'm not doing knife painting and a thick palette uh, with thick, thick paint and, and, and uh, a thick canvas. I want it to dry relatively fast so my wife can hang it up soon. That's why I'm using acrylics. There we go. Bam! Elephant! <laughs> oh, I love it. I love doing this stuff. This is so fun, everybody. You gotta try it, even if you're not an artist. Just, just you know, just to touch this canvas, you know? And get a little dirt on your hands, or a little paint on your hands, whatever clay, or whatever creative thing, you know, sculpture, clay, or painting. Just, just give it a shot, give it a try. You might love it, or you might hate it, but you might love watching other people do it. Some people aren't into it. My wife, she's a writer. She's not like into making this type of stuff. She, she says, I'll leave it up to you, I'll do the writing. But Daphne's my wife, is dedicated to her just as well, and, and the elephants, and raising money. Again, like, subscribe, thank you for watching. If you're into art, become the artist that you were meant to be that you're born to be but if you support this you're supporting elephants i promise we will be completely transparent and show how we will raise money and donate it in this case for the elephant causes so get the word out and again thank you for watching i'll see you next time